How is everyone doing tonight? There we go. That's the energy I like. All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Xavier Nunez Sundara. I'm 18 years old. I'm an IB senior here at Valencia High School, and I believe in the power of habit. One of my favorite hobbies is to learn. Whenever I'm not working on a school assignment, I'm always learning something new. In my endless search for knowledge, I've come across many, many books, from the science fiction of Isaac Asimov to the biographies of Plutarch. One of the many topics I've encountered throughout this journey of learning is the topic of habit formation. Tonight's talk is primarily a summary of two especially good books that I've read on the topic. The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg and Atomic Habits by James Clear. Anything that you find in this talk tonight that is gold, assume that it was their doing. Anything that you find in error, assume it was my fault. Now what is a habit? A habit is an automatic response to a specific situation. A habit can be broken down into a three-step process. A cue, a response, and a reward. A cue is a specific situation that brings to your mind's attention the need for a change. A response is an action done in order to bring about the change first noticed with the cue. And the reward is simply the satisfaction that you get when you have finally brought about the change that your mind so craved when you noticed the cue. In one sentence, a habit is a cue which triggers a response which leads to a reward. Many things in our lives can be broken down into this three-step process. Packing a backpack is something familiar to all the students in the room and to those watching via their computers. Q, your backpack is empty and you want to be ready for school. Response, you begin packing your backpack with everything that you need for school. Paper, pencils, water, food, maybe gym clothes, but I was, I, I think they washed the loners yesterday, so I, I might not need those. Reward. You are now ready for school, and you can eat your breakfast in peace. Walking your dog is another habit familiar to all my pet owners in the audience. For the responsible ones amongst you, your cue is, it's 8 o'clock. You like to regularly walk your dog. I respect that. For the rest of us, though, who are perhaps a little busy, our cue is, the dog will not stop barking at me and I please just want to get back to my work. Either way, the response is the same. You put the leash on old Fido and you take him out for a walk around the block. Reward, you no longer have to worry about walking your dog, at least until tomorrow. Even more complicated tasks in our lives can be broken down into this simple three-step process. One of my favorite examples is what I like to call the last minute homework dash, something that all of us have done. Yes, even you, even if you don't think that you have done this before, you have done this. To increase the anxiety of our hypothetical student, let's say that this is an essay project. Q, it's the day before your essay is due and you haven't written a single word towards your project. Response. You find a place where you can start writing, and you start writing. Declare war on anyone who tries to interrupt you. Mom, leave me alone. I don't need to eat. I need to write. Reward. You now have a finished essay, or at least something that you can call an essay right before your teacher. It might not be as good as it could have been if you hadn't procrastinated, but at the very least, you have something done and you no longer have this sword hanging above your head. You can crash onto your bed in peace. I said earlier that I believe in the power of habit. Well, so far, all I've been doing is explaining what habits are. I haven't explained what the power of habit is, nor why I believe in it. Well, the power of habit, sim simply put, is the simple idea that small things can create tremendous effects 
if repeated over a long period of time. As the author James Clear puts it, habits are the compound interests of self-improvement. The same way that money multiplies through compound interests, the effects of your habit multiply as you repeat them. Put another way, small things make big things happen. As for why I believe in the power of habit, it's really one reason, the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. March 2020 is a date familiar to all the students in the crowd and to those watching via our live stream. March 2020 was the date our world came to a standstill and we all had to stay at home in response to the global outbreak of SARS-CoV-2, better known as COVID-19. This generated many problems for many students across the world. One of those problems being distraction. How were you supposed to do schoolwork if you were in a crowded house with everyone trying to do their own thing in the worst of situations? I know that this was a struggle for me in a household of seven people. I knew that if I were, was to continue to prosper in my education, I had to change something. So I did. Up until this point, the science of habit formation was a mere theoretical construct. But during the pandemic, I put it into practice. I created small habits that have helped carry me through the worst of it. I started to develop a habit of preparing all of my things on my desk right before a Zoom class, of creating separate environments for work and relaxation with my family, and also scheduling my day every day. Now, in my senior year, I actually get a reasonable amount of sleep, something that I never got when I was a freshman. I get about nine hours of sleep and about two hours uh, relaxing with my family. I think that's a pretty respectable amount. During my junior and senior year, times that are expected to be the hardest in our IB program here, I have found for myself a space to thrive. And that's because of the power of habit. But maybe you don't believe in the power of habit just from one, that one personal anecdote. I understand the skepticism. I am just an IB senior here at Valencia High School. So I'll share with you one story before we move on. This story is set in mid 20th century America in a prison cell in Massachusetts. We see a young man hunched over a dictionary, painstakingly transcribing it word for word to learn the definitions of all the words in the English language. Whenever he's not transcribing the dictionary, he's reading whatever he can get his hands on in the prison library. Every day he does this, and after his release, he becomes one of the most famous and well-spoken orators of the civil rights movement. I refer to Malcolm X. Now, you might be thinking, well, Xavier, this is all well and good, but how can this help me? Thank you very much, hypothetical audience member, because I was honestly struggling to move on to this next section in my outline here. I should note that what I am going to share with you in this tip section will not make you the next famous nationwide orator like Malcolm X. It might not even make you uh, the best person in your particular work field. But what I can guarantee is that it will certainly improve your situation as it is now. Furthermore, you should not try to habitize everything in your life trying to make everything into this three-step process of a cue, response, and a reward is taking the process of habit formation and making it into a hammer and looking for nails. And that is never a useful mindset, unless, of course, you are always dealing with nails, in which case you should probably talk with a workplace safety coordinator because I'm pretty sure you shouldn't be dealing with nails unless you're a construction worker. Now, how can I go about 
making these habits? Well, you can do one of two things. You can read the literature on habit formation. Again, I recommend reading uh, The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg and Atomic Habits by James Clear. They go into wonderful detail on the process of habit formation and you can gleam useful insights in your own daily lives to help make your own habits with your own experimentation. Or you can just keep listening on to this TED Talk because I have actually done this experimentation and I can share with you what I know works. Now, with that said, what do I think uh, is something that you can try? What do I think works? First, make a habit something easy to do. Now this may seem counterintuitive. Xavier, how am I supposed to do tremendous things if it's something, excuse me, how am I supposed to do tremendous things if it's something easy to do? Doesn't that necessarily mean that I'm not moving my dial much? Well, that's not really the point of making a habit easy to do. The point of making an easy habit is to build up momentum so that way you'll actually be more likely to do a harder habit. For instance, if you want to be a runner, which I recommend that you do, it's good cardio exercise. You should not start out with a habit of, I will run 10 miles every day. I am a fourth year cross country runner and that is something hard for me to do. Your goal shouldn't even be to run a mile every day. Instead, your goal should be to put on your running clothes and go outside and put on your shoes. How am I supposed to run like that? How am I supposed to develop a running habit after that, you might be asking. Well, think of it like this. This easy habit has already gotten you outside. Your mind will start thinking, well, I'm already out here, so I might as well keep going and actually run. That's the power of making a habit easy to do. It will already get you in the situation that you need to be in to actually move forward. Another thing that you can do is to make obvious cues. That is, you make the triggers of your habits so obvious that you just can't help doing them once you see your cue. I recommend making your cues a specific environment or a specific object that you regularly come into contact with. For instance, when I want to do any real work, uh, be it a homework project, an extracurricular writing project, uh, or a creative uh, art project, I designate a particular desk at my house for solely working on something like that. And whenever I'm on that desk, I am focused and I can get tremendous amounts of work done. A final tip, and I think that this is perhaps the most important one, is to make your habit fun to do. At the end of the day, the workout routine that is the most healthy thing in existence will do you nothing if you don't want to do it. The workout routine that you want to do will actually make you healthy. And now as I close off this talk tonight and leave you, I have one more quote to share with you. It's another one from James Clear from Atomic Habits, and it's this. You do not rise to the level of your goals. You fall to the level of your systems. In other words, your habits. At first, this may seem disheartening. Xavier, are you telling me that I am subject to the tides of things that I do subconsciously? It's something that I don't even think about? Are you saying that I am doomed to be in the lot that I am in right now just because my systems are the way they are? Well, no, I just told you that you can add things to your system. You can change your system by making new habits. Even small changes to your systems will create great effects in the long run. That is the power of habit. Have a great night, everyone.